we had just closed out the $7 million year and Phil Liven and I got to together for dinner. Now, Phil is a personal friend. He's also a personal investor. At the end of the dinner, he said, what's your plan to get to $100 million? What I've seen is, I think around Silicon Valley, there's this love affair with startups and in particular, the really scrappy small startup team phase. But we should not lose sight of the fact that the end goal is not to remain a startup. To be a company and not a startup is a mental shift in and of itself. And for me, that meant a mental shift from founder to CEO. The first step in this plan towards 100 million for us was signing more and larger accounts. The difference between the accounts that we had and the ones that we were restructuring ourselves to go after, I think of is, uh, did they pass the mom test? And if you look at our clients now, which include Neiman Marcus and Sur La Tab and L.L. Bean and Brooks Brothers, like my mom knows all of those companies. The approach that you take with the larger organizations is very different than the approach that we took with the mid-sized organizations that we started out with. They are more complex. There are higher dollars that are at stake. There are executive relationships which need to be fostered over longer periods of time. The intensity involved in winning that first large client was an all hands on deck kind of initiative. We had our engineers build new functionality that we hadn't previously conceived. We had our sales team going deep with the, their counterparts to really understand what were the things that we could bring to the table from a service perspective to go from saying, I have a product and here are all of its features and look at all the things that it can do to saying, I understand your problems, and I believe that we have a, at least a big portion of the solution to those problems. The second part of the plan to get to $100 million was really about building out the executive team that I knew I would need around the table in order to achieve this, this larger degree of success. And for Telepart being largely a product and engineering oriented company then as well as now, the most important hire that we could make was our vice president of engineering. The way that I scoped the role was equal parts leader, manager, understander of the been there, done that, as well as close to the metal doer. Right? And not so much that hands would be on keyboard, but that this person would really be able to command the respect of the people that were writing all of the software. Right? And to be able to find somebody who can, who can span those two ends of the spectrum is a, is a difficult role to fill. The third part of getting to $100 million was really about acceleration. We hit profitability pretty early on and we've always kept our burn low. And so we had some dry powder. And so we started canvassing the market and we said, are there other things that we should be investing in? And we shared in common an investor with a company called AdStack. And the CEO of that company, Evan Reiser, and I had sat down a few months before just to trade notes as entrepreneurs. And I said, you know, it seems like what you guys built is an analog for what we've built, but in an entirely adjacent market. If we put the two of our businesses together, could this be a two plus two equals five scenario? We did the acquisition, we brought them in, and I would suggest that within 10 days, you wouldn't have been able to tell who was original AdStack and who was original Telepart. I ran into Phil at a conference and neither of us knew the other was gonna be there. I was able to recount for him the story and say, by the way, we crossed $100 million last year. And it was just one of those fun moments among entrepreneurs, among friends, and frankly, from an entrepreneur to his investor that you could say, like, we've achieved something pretty special. Don't stop believing. Oh, can that be the outro? Yeah. <laughs>